going home with your victory. Amen. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. amen. I repeat, you are going home with your victory. Amen. I repeat again, you are going home with your victory. Amen. I say again, you are going home with your victory. Amen. I say again, you are going home with your victory. Are you set for something? Yes, this impartation must answer for you. Yes, you are going to lift up your voice. Lord, after this impartation, make an end of every frustration. In the name of Jesus Christ. After this impartation service, cause doors to open for me. Cause barriers to be leveled for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your voice and talk to God. Lord, let this impartation answer for me. Let it answer for me. Cause every barriers to be crushed. Every barriers to be leveled. Every opposition to be crushed. In the name of Jesus Christ. I am going home with my full scale laughter. My full scale breakthrough. The blessings appointed for me. I am taking full delivery of them. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I am going home with my full scale blessing. The blessings appointed for me. I am taking total delivery of every one of them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I am not living here empty handed. Lord, as this impartation answer in my life. Cause every invisible barrier. Invisible limitation. To be shattered by the power of God. Thank you for what you are said to do today. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. That thing fighting you mysteriously, we give up on you today. Amen. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. amen. The power behind that frustration you are going through, it will be shattered today in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. amen. Anything that have subjected you to constant depression, that evil veil will leave you today in the name of Jesus. Whatever makes you laugh in the day and cry in the night, I decree it shall be over today. It shall be over today. Financial depression will be over today. Marital depression will be over today. Career frustration will be over today. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. And whoever is behind your pain, they will have a shame. Amen. I said they will have a shame. Amen. I said they will have a shame. Amen. I said they will have a shame. Amen. The laughter you have never recorded in your lifetime, mark it, it is breaking forth in this service. I repeat, it is breaking forth in this service. I repeat, it is breaking forth in this service. And whatever good news you have long waited for, before this service will be over, it will be announced for you. I say it will be announced for you. I say it will be announced for you. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Make that amen louder again. Amen. Put those hands together for the Lord. Take your seat, God bless you. This is the last of the series in our teaching for this month. Is there no balm in Gilead? Understanding your right to total health. We're going to take that and finish up 
breaking, terminating the power behind your frustration. In the first service, we will be focusing on spiritual frustration. In the third service, we are going to be handling career and business frustration. And in the third service, we are going to handle family and financial frustration. Family and financial frustration. Total health is not a wish. It is your right. It is your right in Christ to stay healthy. But in as much as it is your right, you have one assignment to enforce it. If you must stay healthy, you must be committed to being healthy. And one thing that no one can give you which only the Holy Ghost can give is joy. Somebody can make you happy but only God can make you joyful. By redemption, we have an eternal access way to the joy of our salvation. Scripture says, with joy shall you draw waters out of the wells of salvation. With joy. If I give you money now, you will be happy. True of us? But I don't determine your joy. Do you know why? There are some people that have the money, they are still not joyful. Am I correct? So having the money did not create the joy. Redemption, like I said, gave, gave us access to the joy of our salvation. Why? There are unfathomable blessings, uncountable blessings, unlimited blessings that goes with the, the salvation. By so doing, it creates moments of unending joy. No wonder scripture says, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say, rejoice. Rejoice. No matter what is happening, rejoice. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? No matter what is happening, you must do what? Rejoice. In fact, everything that is happening is happening for your good. I say it's happening for your good. I say it's happening for your good. And until you see it happening for your good, you may not take advantage of the moment. Satan can create moments of depression, but you must be smarter with the arrangement. If you are not smarter, you will fall for it. I'd like us to understand also that our joyful state also determines our healthy state. Our joyful state determine our healthy state. How joyful you are will determine how healthy you will live. People that are not joyful they cannot last long. Proverbs 17 and verse 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. 
but a broken spirit dried the bone. Proverbs 18 and verse 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear the spirit of a man. So what sustains your spirit is your joyful state. As I said, your joyful state determines your healthy state. If you are not joyful, you cannot be healthful. If you are not joyful, that's why I say nobody is responsible for your joy. Nobody. 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 You know, erroneously, many of us have tried as much as we can to impress people. And the more you try to impress people, the more they get you oppressed. The more they get you depressed. Who are you impressing? Me or me impress you? Lie, lie. Your joyful state determines your healthy state. A merry heart. Do it good like medicine. So every time you are making merry, every time you are excited, every time you are joyful, you don't know that you are helping your body. You are helping your body, helping your soul, helping your spirit, man. Some people even frown and came to church today. They are still frowning, you know. But by the time I'm through with you now, that demon called frowning will leave you. Yeah. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying now? I said it will leave you. I said it will leave you. Yeah. Jerry Sabe said, if Satan can steal your joy, he can keep your goods. There is something the devil has targeted to take away from you by keeping you moody. Keeping you frowning. Every time you are joyful, the hormones in your body, <laughs> they are functioning well. But you don't know. You can't truly live in health. You can't truly be in health without being joyful. Medically, I hope you know you need more muscles to frown. Anytime you are frowning your face, more muscles are under tension. And you need lesser muscles to laugh, to be happy. Tell your neighbor, be joyful. Whatever it is now that is creating a concern is already programmed in your future. I say it's already in your future. That's why God said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you. When God said to give you a future, a hope and an expected end. Is there anything that he said he will give that he cannot give? Scripture says he opened his hand wide and satisfied the desire of every living thing. I want to let you know you are more than a living thing. I say you are more than a living thing. Yeah. Scripture says, Blessed is the man whom thou chooseth. You are the choosing of the Lord. Yeah. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causeth to approach unto his throne. Not everybody can approach unto his throne because not everybody is the redeemed of the Lord. But for you that is the redeemed of the Lord, he said he will give you. He will give you. He will give you. Yeah. Do you know what? Anytime you are not joyful, it's a sign that you don't trust God enough. I said, I won't marry. Now we are we are buying three October and nothing. Just they tell me. Until you change, the thing will not come. Tell your neighbor, be joyful. Be joyful. Be joyful. be joyful. be joyful. The more joy you create. Hear me? You are the one that will create your own joy. Yo. You are the one that will create your own joy. Nobody will create it for you. If you are waiting for people to create it for you, they will be creating more sorrow for you. 
they will be creating more offenses for you. They will be creating more anger, more bitterness, everything. That's the only thing they will be creating for you. So, you are responsible for your joyful state. Nobody. That's why I can charge and fight you finish. I'm laughing. That's my style. I don't allow anything to overwhelm me. Because anything that overwhelms me, this head will not work well. Am I telling you something? You are responsible for your own joy. Create it. You want to live long? You want to stay healthy? Create your own joy. No matter what is happening, scripture says, and it came to pass. Whatever you are confronted with now, it will come to pass. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. If you say you don't want, you may die before your time. Lack of joy can create plenty of things. One of the things it can create is depression. And you know, depression is the gateway to satanic oppression. And when you are oppressed by Satan, the torment of death will come. Fear will grip you. Anytime you lie down, that torment will be there. So you must break it. Tell your neighbor, you must break it. Lack of joy can also create bitterness. And bitterness is injurious to our health. You can be bitter and be better. David said, why are thou that cast on my soul? Why are thou disquieted within me? He said, well, yeah, praise the Lord. The challenge you are talking about, hear me? Whether you like it or not, it will be solved. I say it will be solved. Amen. But if you go and allow depression to overwhelm you, and you die for nothing, they will still solve it and they will still chop the money. Am I saying the truth? Yes, Tell your neighbor, be joyful. be joyful. I won't forget a woman. She was married. She had stroke because she was angry with the husband. She was angry and that anger grew to a state where the enemy took advantage of it and strike her with stroke. So my pastor now sent me one day to go and pray for her in the hospital. So I went there. I prayed. As I was praying, the woman was crying. I knew that there was something. I just knew that there was something. So I just called the doctor who allowed me to enter, even though it was not a visiting hour. I told her that uh, there is something doing this woman. Can you carry her out? So they now rode her into her office. And I told her that there is something you need to tell us that is making you cry. What is that thing? As we mentioned it, the tempo of the cry increased. Are you wrong saying now? So we allowed her to finish the crying. She finished the crying and came down. Are you hearing me now? So all the tears are now the kata. We clean it. He said, yeah, can you tell us now? She raised the temple. <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, I just believe God for wisdom. I said, who is it that you have heard and vowed not to let go? She said, my husband. She said, my husband did something to me some years ago. And the thing is still paining me. Don't die for nothing, no. And the thing is still paining me. So I said, God is willing to heal you if you are willing to let him go. Just let him go. Forgive him. So, I say, I will not pray until you agree. So, even when she has finished agreeing, she started crying again. 
because <laughs> bitterness is a poison dangerous poison she was so bitter the bitterness grew to hot the hot ah! no 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 finally finally she agreed when i prayed for her and before you know what's happening the hand that couldn't move before started moving started moving so they started massaging it about three or four days later she was discharged so we now told the husband that this is what happened please husband i beg be begging your wife are you hear what i'm saying now be begging them are you hearing what i'm saying now uh -huh. so the husband knelt down and pleaded and asked for forgiveness and that was how peace was restored please i want to let you know that word called joy in you <laughs> is powerful are you hear what i'm saying now <laughs> wherever joy is found praise is found wherever praise is found god will be there you can't be joyful and not be praiseful you cannot be praiseful and not enjoy his presence there is a presence that goes with joyful people and there is always a presence that goes with frownful people people that are always frowning there is a presence that go with them Scripture says, with joy shall you draw waters out of the wells of salvation. So that thing called joy, J-O-Y, is powerful. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. No devil can stop a joyful man. No devil can limit a joyful woman. Because wherever joy is found, the presence of God will be made manifest. For in his presence there is fullness of joy. At his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And you know wherever God is found, sickness cannot survive. So your joyful state makes it impossible for you to be choked by sickness. Rather it will choke out sickness out of your life. So be joyful. Be joyful. What LED O thou see that thou fled it? Thou Jordan that was living back. He said, tremble thou at the presence of the Lord. So, the more joyful you are, you suffocate sickness. You suffocate affliction. You suffocate enchantment. Do you know, the enemy is angry when he sees you laughing. He's, anytime he sees you excited, he's angry. You mean that upon all the things I'm doing to this person, he's still excited? That will let you know how powerful it takes to be joyful. It's a powerful therapy. So, don't undermine it. Take advantage of it. Apostle Paul said, for we know all things work together for our good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Apostle Paul said, he shall turn to me for my joy. You hear me? No matter what is happening to you now, it will turn to you for your joy. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. If you are not joyful, you will be hopeless. Lack of joy creates hopelessness. And when you are hopeless, you become helpless by God. God cannot help a hopeless man. So by all means, do everything to protect your joyful state. Proverbs 4 verse 23, <laughs> Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues. Life has plenty issues. For out of it are the issues of life. Life has plenty issues. You handle them one by one as they come, by maintaining your joy. But if you are not joyful, you can't solve problems. Are you hearing me now? If you are not joyful, you can't solve problem. You will be overwhelmed by problem. So by all means, maintain a joyful state. A merry heart. Do it good like medicine. A merry heart. So you create your own merriment in your heart. The merry you create in your heart is what helps to service your body. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Even doctors now, they are smart. When they notice that psychologically that um, you are not too happy, they will not just administer medication immediately. They will try to do things around you that will create moments of laughter. Am I correct? They will try to do things that will create moments of laughter before they will begin to administer to you. So increase in being joyful. Every day be joyful. Satan did not make the day. So be joyful. He did not make the day. He didn't make the day. So he didn't make you. So be joyful. Be joyful. Tell your neighbor, be joyful. No matter what is happening, be joyful. In fact, your joyfulness cancels what is happening and is contrary to you. Whatever is contrary to you, the more joy you create, the more reversals you experience. The things begin to change, begin to turn in your favor. So don't allow lack of joy to create depression. And when depression comes, you are opening the doors of affliction. Satan cannot afflict your body if you have not succeeded in afflicting your mind and your spirit. He can't afflict your body if he has not succeeded in afflicting your mind and your spirit. So create joy. You don't need to be in the choir to be joyful. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You don't need to be in the choir and be joyful. You can even be in the choir and be frowning. Yes, ma'am. Plenty did now. <laughs> you can be in choir and be frowning. You didn't do me, you're only doing yourself. Why? Because you are not allowing the place to work for you. You are lying what a... Uh, do you know, one of the things that is making people not to be joyful is what they had. What they had, what people say. Is it today that people started saying? Even when Jesus came, they were saying. They go see the talk. Talk, talk, talk. You go tired, talk. Be talking. If what people are saying is what is keeping you depressed, you are a fool. Yes. If what people are saying is what is keeping you depressed, you are a fool. Is it today that they started talking? Jesus came, they were talking. They say it was filled with the spirit of Bezebel. The Messiah, Messiah. Give yourself rest though. Allow people to be doing the assignment. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Give yourself rest. If not, you don't die for nothing. Allow them to be talking. It's a ministry. You want to withdraw them from their ministry? Let them be doing your ministry. You face your assignment. The assignment is to do the talking while you enjoy the manifestation. Uh -uh. Don't you know that their talking is helping your manifestation? So if you don't want to stop your manifestation, allow them to do the talking. It's a ministry. Someone will say, so, Pastor, did you hear what they said about me? Someone came to tell me one day, Pastor, did you hear what they said about me? I said, what did they say? What have they not said? I said, I beg go, they have not said anything. Am I not the pastor? Do you know the volume they have said about me? Have I allowed it to affect the preaching? Nonsense. Really nonsense. It's a ministry. So allow the ministry to continue. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But if you allow it to steal your joy, you are a fool. All the things people have been saying, has he stopped my blessing? Has he stopped the heavens opening from me? Has he stopped the power of God flowing through me? Now you go tired now. Check it. 90% of the depression that people are suffering is not sickness. It's what people said. The people talking about you, is their life better than you? 
The people talking about you, do they have any contribution to make your life better than what it is? So why are you troubled? You go and carry sickness because of one man mouth. So relax yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Do you know what should create joy for you? Jeremiah said, Thy words we have found, and I did eat them. And they became to me the joy and rejoicing of my soul. Thy words we have found. And the psalmist said, Oh! <laughs> He says, Zion, better things are spoken concerning you. There are many good things that have been declared concerning you in the world that should create your joyful state. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and they became to me the joy and rejoicing of my soul. So be joyful. Tell your neighbor again, be joyful. No matter what is happening around you, it will only get better. I say 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 it will only get better. Take advantage of your moments. Create joy around you. Create excitement around you. Be happy. Be happy. Be joyful. Whether there is food, be happy. Whether there is no food, be happy. You never chopped before? You have been chopping before. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So even if you are not chopping now, nobody can out chop you. Because very soon you will start chopping again. I'm saying something to someone, you will start chopping again. Be happy. Tell your neighbor, be excited. Be excited. Breaking the power or terminating the power behind frustration. I learned something from my master, Pastor Jeremy. He said, if Satan can't stop you, he will do everything possible to frustrate you. I want to let you know you are an unstoppable entity. You are an unstoppable entity. If Satan can't stop you, he will do everything to frustrate you. He will do everything possible to weary you. Hear this? Frustration creates momentary loss of passion. When you lose your passion, you lose motion and you lose action. Spiritually, we are taking the spiritual now, terminating the power behind spiritual frustration. Nothing creates frustration like a desire being delayed, an expectation not yet manifested. It creates frustration. And I will tell you why it creates frustration. It's all part of satanic arrangement to get you frustrated. Make you feel that God has failed. The next thing that will happen to you, you begin to doubt the word of God. Is this prophecy really true? What is the need for me to pray again? Frustration. It's frustration. Because a desire has not come to pass. Now God is no longer God. He said, I am the Lord, I change it not. Change it not. Frustration expresses itself 
in anger, wrong utterance. Most especially when we begin to lose sight of our dream. When we begin to lose touch with our goal. When we begin to lose touch with our appointed vision. Frustration will begin to creep in. This thing is not working the way I see it. Now let you see something. Joseph knows see something. After he dreamt an awesome and colorful dream. The first thing that he saw. After the dream. He threw him into the pit. Is that the dream? Is that the dream? After they threw him into the pit, they said, let's pity him and sell him as a slave. They collected him and sold him to slave merchants. Is that part of the dream? And that one was not enough. From being sold as a slave, he entered into the Wahala of Potiphar's wife. I'd like to let you know this. If you are going through frustration, you are investing in frustration. Write that word down. You are investing in it. You are investing in frustration. You are increasing your investment in becoming more and more frustrated. Frustration eats up potentials. Your capacity to get something done is eating up. Why? Because you are frustrated. If Joseph did not believe his dream enough, he would have returned back. But he believed his dream enough to ignore what was happening. Scripture says concerning Jesus for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame for the joy that was set before What he said before him, the goal is reaching the cross and entering transition. What is your goal? Like I told you, the moment you lose touch with your goal, frustration will come. The moment you lose touch with your dream, frustration will come. The moment frustration comes, your potentials begin to die. Your creative instincts begin to fade. Your spiritual stamina begins to dry up. Your passion for prayer begins to wane. No wonder when we call for prayer, not everybody comes. It's a sign of spiritual frustration. I don't pray now. I don't pray tired. If God they hear, why never hear? But Job said, all the days of my appointed time, will I wait until my change comes? It takes one that is sure that this change will come to keep with it. Faithful is he that called thee, who also will do it. He said he abided faithful. He cannot deny himself. So quit frustration. You are only giving wicked forces enough room to operate around you, manipulate you, cast you down. And you know when you give in to frustration, the agents of the devil, they are in church. They are not outside. The agents of the devil, they will not say, yes, we don't get one. Let's make sure he falls. They begin to attack you. You hear me? The bigger your dream, the bigger the attack. The devil will not attack you less. He will attack you more. The higher you go, the more the stop. I'd like us to know this. Spiritual frustration is a programming of the devil. Because they know something big is about to be accomplished in your life. So by all means, since we know we can't stop him, let's get him frustrated so that he will not arrive at where God has in mind for him. Can you imagine a prophet of fire, Elijah, who was being terrorized by one person called Ahab. He said, Lord, Am I better than the other prophet? He better kill me now. He better kill me before this woman will come and kill me.
Frustration is an enemy of God's plan and purpose. No wonder Paul said, for a great door and effectual is open unto us, but there are many adversaries. First Kings chapter 19, let's look at it from verse 4. I anointed prophet of fire. But he himself went a day journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a journey part tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life. For I'm not better than my fathers. I don't tire. There are some people that are saying, I don't tire. It is frustration. Do you know that frustration also may, almost made Moses to miss it? The people you are leading can make you frustrated when you begin to lose touch of where you are going. Some pastors that have died early, not because they want to die, Wahala of members. You know, members can give Wahala. They almost killed Moses for nothing. They, ma they made him strike the rock against the instruction. But it's all calculated by the devil to make you miss it. The people he was leading created the frustration. But God helped him. But you don't know, it was all calculated to make sure they don't enter the promised land. Satan did everything possible to make sure that they don't enter the promised land. So he created, he made sure that the people, they offended him. They offended him. Is he in CCU? Is he in choir? Is he in sanctuary? They will give you a headache. Heavy headache. They will frustrate you. You tell them, do it like that. They say, no. This is how we have been singing before you came. <laughs> Another thing that the enemy will do to create frustration is to open the doors of accusation. But scripture said, the accuser of the brethren accused them before God day and night. Are you the first to be accused? It's a satanic plan. Have I been accused? <laughs> Plenty times. If you hear my own accusations, have you go pity me? All manner of accusation. All manner of lies. That they cannot even stand and say it. Don't tell anybody. I'm just informing you. I'm just informing you. Just be watching out. Just watch out what I'm telling you now. Just watch out what I'm telling you now. Accuser of the brethren. Just let me tell all the pastors. Just watch out what I'm telling you. I'm just informing you. Don't let him know. Don't let him know. The accuser of the brethren. And some of them, per adventure, they know. And they are not able to manage their emotion and manage their dream. They will get offended and get frustrated. The accuser of the brethren accused them before God day and night. Do you know why you need to terminate the powers? Let's take it this way first. 
for frustration to enter you to overwhelm you and dominate you number one you don't know who you are and anytime you don't know who you are your frustration is increasing you don't know who you are you don't know who you are if you know who you are you will take it as one of those normal things If you know who you are, you will know where you are going. The reason why you allow frustration to enter you, you don't know who you are, so you easily get distracted. One thing frustration will do is to create moments of distraction. You are now out of your focus you are now focusing on what doesn't matter if you allow what does not matter to matter the truth is that you will lose what matters my master said one day don't allow what is not important to make you impotent When people are raging with accusation, no manner of lies, no manner of blackmail to get you frustrated, if you give it attention, you will become impotent. You are giving, when you give it attention, it looks as if what they are saying is important. It's not important. If it is important, make it an issue. Make it an issue if it's important. You know, the devil is very smart. He will try to gather people to get that attention. To make them believe. And the moment you begin to give it attention, you get frustrated. Instead of pursuing God's plan, you are pursuing the enemy's plan. Satan wants you to leave God's plan and pursue the enemy's plan. And before you know what's happening, <laughs> the frustration is increasing. Do we walk in the flesh? We do not war after the flesh. Do we walk in the flesh? We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of this dark age. don't know who you are for frustration to get a hold of you number two you are carrying the wrong word instead of the right word the wrong word You know what it means to carry the wrong word? The wrong signal. Signal of, I am late. I am disappointed. I am being delayed. Why is all this thing happening to me? Why is God not manifesting? But scripture said, Job 23 verse 14, it performed it for me. The thing that is appointed unto me and many such things are with him. Many such things are with him. So be careful. Don't allow frustration because it is a programming of the devil. If you allow it, you will be dancing the drum beat of the enemy. There is no enchantment against Judah. Neither is there any divination. 
You know I mean? If you allow frustration to enter you, you can kill him. Cain killed his brother. Now frustration do him. He felt his brother was going to be more blessed than him. So what he needed to do was to kill him so that he can collect the blessing. Did he collect it? What is doing many people in church is still the same frustration. They feel that this brother is going to be blessed more than me. So let me do everything that I need to do to wire him. So they look for every available means. They look for people that are close to him. They look for people within the CNN network of LFC Lafia. Let's spread it fast so that we get him frustrated. Is a witchcraft assignment. You don't know? Frustration is witchcraft. Just to make sure that the plan of God for your life is aborted. But God's plan for you will not be aborted. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. What then is the cure for your frustration? Keep your eyes on your dream. Keep your eyes on your goal. Keep your eyes on your dream. Keep your eyes on your goal. Keep your eyes on your dream. Keep your eyes on the goal. As long as your, that was exactly what Joseph did. He kept his eyes on the dream. Are you know what I'm saying now? He kept his eyes on the dream. He didn't allow all the arrangements made by his brothers. His frustration started with his brothers. Household wickedness. They were the ones that started his frustration. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Even in church, his brethren that starts your frustration. But he didn't allow it to stop him. The dream he saw was genuine. He believed the dream, so he knew he was going to get there. Make sure he kept his eyes on the dream. No wonder. When the dream finally came to pass, he called and said, Come. You remember me? God, don't catch you today. He said, I am that Joseph. I am that Joseph. When he said, I am that Joseph, it's like the earth should open for them to enter inside. Do you know the next thing he said? You meant it for evil, but God turned it around for my deliverance. So whatever people are doing now to get you frustrated and you are allowing it to overwhelm you is only for a moment. Why? Because God will surely turn it around for your deliverance. So keep your eyes on the dream, keep your eyes on the goal. Number two, tell yourself it's only but for a moment. It's only but for a moment. Surely there is an end. Proverbs 23 verse 18. And thy expectation, not your frustration. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. Surely there is an end. There is an end to that frustration. But you must tell yourself it's only for a moment. For the joy that was set before him, he endured it. He endured it. <laughs> Anything you are doing now, do because you will soon expire. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Anything you are doing now, do because you will soon what? Expire. Frustration expires. So allow it to expire while you reach your goal. It's only but for a moment. It cannot last forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? When you keep your eye on the dream, on the goal, men get excited. No wonder Paul said, count it all joy when you are faced with diverse trials and what? Temptation. Count it all joy. It's all part of the game. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Don't allow it to make you sit down and then you cannot do anything. No! You are going forward. I say you are going forward. It's only but for a moment. Number three, failure is never final. And success is never ending. The fact that you failed or you made a mistake spiritually does not mean that you have ended. Rejoice not over me, O enemy of my soul. He said, Though I fall, I shall rise again. 
The fact that you made a mistake or that you failed does not mean that you have ended. Rejoice not over me, O enemy of my soul. He said, though I fall, I will do what? Rise again. There's nothing wrong in falling, but there's something wrong in falling and not rising. Are you know what I'm saying now? So if you fall, you must rise. When you were a child, didn't you fall? Didn't you rise? In fact, you fall plenty times and you rise plenty times. In fact, you rise to the point that you refuse to fall again. Am I saying the truth? It is the same principle. It's the same principle. When you are learning how to walk, you will stand up, you will fall. 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 Will up, you will fall. And finally, finally, you got to a point you could no longer fall. I want to let you know you will not fall. Yeah. I say you will not fall. Yeah. Number four, don't give up. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. Don't allow frustration to make you give up. If you don't give up, God will not give up. Don't give up. That word, it came to pass, appeared in scripture 353 times. Don't give up. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. If you don't give up, heaven will not give up on you. Don't give up. God is our refuge. A very present help in time of trouble. If you give up, it's a sign of quitting. And winners don't quit. And quitters never what? Win. I like the way one of my mentors puts it. He said, a minute to your shame, God will appear. A minute to your shame, God will appear. So don't give up. Don't give up. And lastly, change your mind. If you don't change your mind, you can't change what is happening around you. Your mind is crucial to everything good that will take place in your life. Do you know what? Frustration begins with the mind. As a man thinketh in his heart. You will think frustrated before you feel frustrated. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You will think frustrated before you feel frustrated, behave frustrated, act frustrated. You must first of all think it. Then you will now feel it. The next thing you do, behave it. The next thing you now do, you are acting it. And people that act frustrated, do you know what? They can damage this keyboard. They can spoil the drum. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If you have a house help that is feeling frustrated, you will break all your glass cup. Everything is doing will be damaging them in the house. But that will not happen to you again. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. And lastly, tell yourself, my tomorrow will be better than my today. My tomorrow will be better than my today. Say to yourself, my tomorrow will be better than my today. As this impartation come upon you, <laughs> every heavy burden the enemy has put upon you will fade away. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. Rise up to your feet. You are going to pray, Lord, whatever has made me bitter, whatever has made me feel hopeless, whatever has made me feel frustrated, Talk frustrated, act frustrated, Lord. By this impartation, let the evil yoke fade away. Lift up your voice and begin to talk to God. My future is colorful, my future is bright. I am going higher, I am going farther. Let God hear your voice. Whatever has made me feel frustrated. Think hopeless. Talk hopeless. 
feel disappointed, feel depressed. Lord, I plead the mercy of the blood of Jesus. I demand deliverance this morning. Leria kataga no shiperida. Zenande de redo ba shote liaga. Allow that evil veil to be wiped out right now. Lezonega de rekatolia. Rekatali anderiete. Jekupreketo kabalaborosha. Entopeli aleta. Every veil of frustration. Every feeling of bitterness. Every feeling of depression. By the blood of Jesus. Let them be wiped out. Let them be wiped out. Let them be wiped out. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Before we take the second prayer, all eyes closed, all heads bow. You are here, you are not born again. And you want to make it right with Jesus, wherever you are. Put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray this prayer with me, wherever you are, come right now. I want to pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. If you are coming, come quickly. God bless you. Put those hands together for the Lord. I want to see my Jesus. Put those hands together for Jesus. If you are coming, come quickly. God bless you. frustration in spiritual satan want to drive you to the point of destroying your life how many of us had the story that happened about four months ago of a woman that drove her car to third Midland bridge parked the car and jumped inside the river it was all blackmail blackmail they blackmailed her in the office she could not manage it do you know what she did? She drove. It's a force. The force said, Why don't you? as you are reaching Tommy Lambridge now, just pack and jump out. Marine powers can kill you if you allow them. That is what we call marine programming. They drove her to the point. Immediately she lit, reached Tommy Lambridge. He said, Jump out now. Jump out now. Jump out now. She obeyed the evil voice. He just came down. Boah. Didn't the office continue? The office go continue. I tell you, the office go continue. Why allow yourself to be wasted? The enemy want to end God's plan concerning you. There is no problem around you that can end your life. None. And she ended like that. She left children. She left her children and ended her life. You will not end your life. Amen. No devil will end your life. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. As this oil come upon you, the good hand of God come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any power of the wicked manipulating issues around you, the yoke is destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. The yoke is destroyed. The yoke is destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Please remain standing here. We are going to pray. 
Lord, as this impartation come upon me, take away the garment of heaviness. Release upon me the spirit of joy. The spirit of joy. As this impartation come upon me, let your favor rest upon me. As this impartation come upon me, open doors for me. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. At this impact, please, pastors, move, move, move. 